welcome to my first video. For those of you who know me, thank you so much for tuning in. And for those of you who are new to me, my name is Hoi. I'm the artist, trainer, and owner of Hoi Tattoo. I'm located in Calgary, Canada. I've been so inspired lately. Thank you so much for joining me live yesterday. Um, we talked a little bit about how we were going to connect, how I take my students step by step through um, different exercises to build the motor function. So I've been thinking, we've been thinking about online for a long time. Um, and luckily we have so much time to really sit down and think about how we want to do it in a way that feels good to us, in a way that translates well, the same experience that you would get if you were to train with me in person. We really wanted to figure how we could film it in a way that captures that, how we can split it up and do different exercises so you guys can slowly build that motor function. Because what I've realized now, having been training for about two, three years, it's really, really hard for students to come in for three to five days and have five to 10 years of knowledge condensed down into one course. Um, so I'm gonna try a little experiment. I want you guys to be collaborative with me as well, okay? I've been so inspired by everyone, all the trainers out there who's been leveling up. So I wanna level up for you guys, okay? And I want you guys to level up during this time, during this downtime that we have. So because we have so much time, I'm actually gonna take you way back to the basics, um, step by step. I'm gonna start with line work first, okay? That is the number one fundamental thing that we have to know, how to do a clean line. That is the base of every single eyebrow. So it's very important that we get the fundamentals right before we get fancy, get creative. So who's ready to build those motor functions with me? So first off, <clears throat> First things first, I want to show you guys how to subscribe to my email list because I will be sending out the worksheets via email and also our mini tutorial videos to you guys straight to your inbox as well. So it's really nice and easy. But first thing, I want you guys to follow me and subscribe to my email list. So a couple things that you guys are going to need when practicing with me, very simple, you're going to need a pencil. You're gonna need some paper or your favorite journal. I'm gonna show you a little bit about um, how I create eyebrows using the iPad as well. If you guys don't have one, don't worry. Um, it's a great investment. I do recommend any, any serious artist or any trainer to invest in an iPad that supports the Apple Pencil. Um, we talked a little bit about the app that I use to do virtual, um, consultations, how I train my students to start to design the eyebrows as well. So I'm going to tell you which app it's going to be. I'm going to take you step by step through how this is done. All right, so first thing I want you guys to do is head to hoitattooeducation.com, H-O-I-T-A-T-T-O-O, education.com. Once you get to this landing page, I want you guys to head to the top right corner here and hit subscribe. It's gonna prompt you to this page where you'll have to just enter your first and last name. Super simple. Your email address so we can send you all the worksheets and videos. And of course you guys can contact us at any time if you have any questions about our training or our services as well. But once you hit sign up here, It'll prompt you to a very, very first worksheet, which is lines and contour. So of course you guys can print this out, um, practice with either pencil and paper, or you can use your iPad and my lovely handy dandy Apple Pencil here, okay? Another thing I want you guys to download, we talked about this yesterday, how I do my virtual consultations and how I practice and how my students practice is an app called Procreate. So Procreate, once you have downloaded my worksheet, you can bring it up onto the app here, which will allow you to draw over top of it, erase, 
and keep practicing. What's great about the um, this app and also the I Apple Pencil is that it really feels and reads your pressure. So you're able to see where you're a little bit too light or too dark. So this is a great app to have. But if you don't, no issue there. There's no issue with practicing on just pencil and paper, which is trusted and tried. All right, so first step is you wanna open the Procreate app. So if you haven't downloaded the worksheet, you can just bring it up. You can import a photo through here, select whichever photo that you want, but I'm gonna bring up my worksheet. All right, so a couple things I need you guys to do first. So there are so many options when it comes to the brush library, but we wanna go into inking and select technical pen. And under this, there are some um, different options that you can control. I do like the streamline option. I usually have this at about 80 um, to 90 or so. And the rest, I just keep it at minimum. And also what you want to click on is also pressure taper. This is the option that allows the pencil to read how consistent your pressure is. So make sure you turn that on. All right, so after this, I'm gonna explain a couple things on the worksheet here, okay? So on the side here, actually, back to the app, this controls the brush size, which is how thick your hair stroke is gonna be. Okay, we're gonna want it to be quite, quite thin. And this one is the opacity, so how intense it is. Doesn't really matter, but I usually have it pretty high when it comes to practicing on these worksheets, okay? So we have four different sections here. The first one, is gonna be one movement perpendicular at 90 degree angle. Second one we're gonna work on is our back and forth movement, also at the 90 degree angle. The third one we're gonna play with is also one movement, but we're gonna actually tilt and angle our pen at a 45 to 60 degree angle. And same thing, a back and forth movement at the 60 to 45 degree angle. Now you're gonna notice that there's two different movements here. There's the single movement and then there's the back and forth movement. And I'm gonna show you how to do both. All right guys, I'm gonna start off by explaining what I mean by one movement, also known as the single pass or the back and forth movement, also known as tic-tacking, okay? So one movement, what I really mean is that we're moving in one uniform direction over and over again, where we're extending the line by single movements. Back and forth, what I mean is your pen or your needle is moving forwards, backwards, forwards, backward to create that hair stroke or create that line. Okay, so one movement means one continuous movement and back and forth literally means back and forth. All right, so the first one we're gonna do, we're gonna have our pen at a 90 degree angle or at that perpendicular angle. So not an angle this way or this way, okay? We also wanna make sure that the tip of our pen, which represents the needle, is always moving in line with the direction of the hair stroke. You don't wanna be coming at it this way because what is that gonna do if it is an actual needle? All that pigment is gonna go into the side. So you wanna make sure the tip of the needle is always guiding the hair stroke, moving in line with the hair stroke, okay? So first things first, I'm gonna start with the one movement. We're gonna start by tacking along the line. What you wanna do is kinda start about one to two millimeters back every time. So then you're slowly, slowly extending in one movement. You don't wanna move your hand too much either. Once you get to a point where your hand can't move anymore, then you wanna readjust and move your anchor point, okay? You don't wanna be moving your hand every single time 
you're using the movement. So have your hand in place, small controlled movements, and notice how the pen is already working a little bit in that pendulum movement, which is how we want to work in the skin. Moving on to back and forth at the 90 degree angle. So same thing, at the 90, you wanna be working back and forth, which means the tip of the needle will maintain contact the entire time. So you're gonna hit the line or hit the skin, backwards, forward, backwards, forward, backwards, forward. And when you leave, make sure you're airplaning and slowly lifting out of the skin. So it, once you leave, you're not gonna enter right at that break point there, okay? Because you have already airplaned out of the skin. You wanna actually go back one to two millimeters and continue the line from there. The motion's almost a little bit feels like shoveling. Make sure when you leave, always airplane out. Moving to the third section, back to the one movement, but we're at an angle. So what I want you to do is create a 60 or a 45 degree angle between your pen and the paper. And what I want you to do is the same movement again, but at an angle. So it's gonna feel a little bit more like scooping, but the idea is still the same. You want to slowly, slowly tag on the line, always moving back one to two millimeters and etching forward one to two millimeters at a time. The shorter your movement, the slower your speed, the more consistent your line is gonna be. Same thing, back and forth but at an angle. So forward, backward, forward, backward, forward, backward. And when you leave again, make sure you're slowly leaving the skin and then reposition your hand. Start two, two, two millimeters back and start working and extending that line again. And continue all the way down. All right, so going back to basics with pencil and paper, I love practicing with pencil just because just like the iPad, it will show pressure as well, okay? So going through the one movement, which I said, it's just one continuous movement. And don't feel like you have to go this long, okay? There's no issue with going short movements, but controlled. What I want you guys to pay attention to too is that the angle of your pencil, you're not holding it like a pencil and coming at it from a sideways angle because what will it do if this is an actual needle? You want to make sure that the needle or the tip of the pencil is always leading and moving in the same direction as the line or your hair stroke. So going back to the one movement, the one continuous movement, notice as I go back, I'm about two millimeters behind as I continue to tag on the line. Back and forth, same thing. We're gonna want to airplane into the skin and maintain consistent contact with the needle and paper the whole time as you're going back and forth. When you can't move anymore, when your motion feels restricted, you wanna airplane and slowly lift off the skin. Then reposition your hand about two millimeters behind. You don't wanna start right at where you left off, okay? If you do, there will be a little empty gap once they come back heel. So what you wanna do, let's say, like I said, once you leave the skin, you wanna come back about two millimeters behind and continue that movement. Same thing, both exercises, but now at an angle and I want you to hold it a little bit more like a cradle, which means your pencil 
it's kind of in between this knuckle point here, okay? So you're at about a 60 to 45 degree angle. Again, slowly into the skin. One single movement, slow and controlled. And the same thing again, back and forth at an angle. All right, so who's ready to practice with me? Oftentimes I find when we come into this career, we're so excited to start doing brows right away that we overlook the fundamentals. And what is the fundamentals? Line work. What is the eyebrows made out of? Single hair strokes and single lines. So it's very important that we get the fundamentals. I wanna give you guys three tips for practicing. Number one, slow, slow, slow. If you've been in one of my classes, I'm always, always on your shoulder telling you to go slow. So slow and steady wins the race. Almost count one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. So keep yourself in that slow rhythm. Number two, you don't want your movements to be very quick and also very long or large. You wanna shorten your step so you have more control, okay? The shorter your step, the more control you have with your line work and the more smooth it's gonna be. And last but not least, number three, make sure that you have a point of contact between your hand and your working area. This is actually how we create smooth and consistent hair strokes, is by having that consistent pressure along the skin or the paper, okay? So remember those three things. I want you guys to start practicing with me. And in the next video, I'll be going over what nice lines are actually gonna be looking like, what I'm actually gonna be looking for in your practice work, and then how to correct that afterwards. So I'll see you at the next one.